Well, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Dr. Michael Stifelman, and I'm the chair of urology here at Hackensack University Medical Center. What we're going to do over the next hour is really try to bring you into our hospital the best we can. Uh, we've taken a lot of effort. Uh, we have cameras uh, as well as d our different faculty and residents throughout the hospital ready to share their experiences with you and then at the end of the program answer as many questions as we, as we can get to. What I'm going to do now is just give you a, a very, very brief overview of our program using a short PowerPoint presentation. So we're going to load that up now and I'm going to share that with you. So um, as, you, as you see on the left of the screen, there is a diagram. Um, it is our brand of Hackensack Meridian Health. And you may look at this and say it's very pretty and it's very colorful, but there's actually a lot of meaning behind that brand. And that brand stands for orchestrating excellence. And that's what this department is about and that's what this medical center is about. It's about orchestrating excellence, working together to be a high reliability organization. And one of the things you will walk away after uh, being spending five years at our hospital and our program is how to work as a team and to orchestrate excellence because every patient is required that to happen. You know, I've been doing residency interviews for about 21 years now. And what I've learned is there are a lot of different ways of evaluating a residency program. I don't think there's any one way in particular is better than the other, but here are the sort of four check boxes that I hear a lot of residents and uh, future residents ask about a program. They want to know about the people. What are the people like at the program? Um, what's the sort of camaraderie? What's uh, the esprit de corps there? How do they get along? Next. They want to know about the clinical experience. That's a huge part of the program. Will they be able to operate? Will they be able to see different types of procedures? Explore different aspects of urology. They want to know about research. What are those research opportunities? Many folks want to go into some sort of fellowship training program, and to do that, they need some research experience. And then finally, we hear this more and more as I've been uh, interviewing residents, what is the work-life balance like? What's the location? So briefly, I'm going to talk about each of these individually. The people of our department, um, obviously every department you visit, they'll say they're amazing, they're all friends, they're all great, and we are exactly the same. We're all friends, we're all great, and we have about 42 urologists. Next. Um, we've got about 30 uh, that come from our volunteer faculty that are very closely integrated within our department, as well as 10 full-time uh, FGP, full-time uh, faculty group practice. We've been training residents for more than 20 years. So residents have been coming here to Hackensack for more than 20 years from programs as prestigious as UMDNJ, as well as uh, New York uh, Hospital. Um, we currently have six residents here. Um, we've got four of our own HMH urology residents. We have a Rutgers residence that rotates every three months as a senior, as well as a New York medical resident from Westchester. So we have six residents on site at any time. And sorry, next year that will be seven residents. Um, we do have a plan to increase our complement of residents to two a year based on the volume, which I'll share with you. And then finally, extremely important is that we are part of a medical school. Hackensack Marine Health has its own school of medicine. Um, our, those medical students rotate through our program uh, for a two-week elective. We also have a four-week sub-internship set up, and we have just developed a one-year research program for medical students. Next. Um, our faculty cover all the different areas of subspecialties within urology. We have oncologists, avoiding dysfunction, people that focus on urinary reconstruction, people that focus on calculus and endourology, pediatrics, and sexual dysfunction. There is not one area of subspecialty in urology that doesn't either have a fellowship-trained physician in that area or a very, very large presence in that area. Our volume is outstanding, and I think this is one of the sort of the magic sauce of this program and really the reason why so many programs want to send their residents to us is because of our volume. Wrap your head around this. We do over 1,000 inpatient surgeries every year. Okay? That is a huge number, especially when you're talking about only having one and at most two senior residents at a time. We do 2,500 
outpatient surgeries every year, and our volume is growing. These are the numbers over the last two years, and as you can see, we are consistently growing by bringing new faculty in. Remember that number when you look at other programs. In terms of technology, I would argue we have some of the best technology in the world here at Hackensack University Medical Center. We have three XI robots, a single port robot, an X robot in an outpatient setting. We have dedicated freestanding console with advanced simulation. We have all of our endoscopy is digital and uh, ad the latest model, as well as having dedicated inpatient and outpatient cystoscopy suites. We have Moses lasers throughout, advanced PCNL technology, and we're about to build and embark on a three quarter of a billion dollar new tower. Next. When you join us here, you will be working in this pavilion. It is called the Helena Thur Pavilion, based on a very generous gift that she had gave us just last week for this tower. This tower will have 24 brand new state-of-the-art operating rooms with intraoperative MRI. Six of the 24 are dedicated to robotics. 50 new ICU rooms and 100 medical surgical beds. Every single bed after this tower is completed will be a private room throughout our institution. Every room will be private. Next. I'm going to switch gears and talk a little about our research. And it's a little bit of a small slide, and I don't expect you to memorize it or necessarily be able to read it or, uh, completely, though I hope you can uh, see it on your computers. But what this is, it represents many, not all, but many of our research projects. We are very aligned with using the REDCap database. And as you can see here, we have thousands of patients in REDCap databases that are prospective. We focus on prospective collection of data, not retrospective, prospective. And all these databases are maintained by our residents as well as by data coordinators. And so at any time you want a question answer and you can go into a database which has already been pre-populated and get those questions answered. We have spent a tremendous amount of effort, time, and money creating these databases. These databases focus on not just cancer, they focus on urinary reconstruction, they focus on female urology, they focus on ED and infertility, and they even focus on some COVID uh, prioritization of surgery. Next slide. And what these databases allow us to do is to be extremely productive in research. And what this slide represents is in the blue, the abstracts that are published out of here every year, and in the red, the peer-reviewed publications that come out of Hackensack. And as you can see, we, early on, we spent a lot of effort and had a lot of success with abstracts. And we presented anywhere between 22 to 26 abstracts a year around the world. These included societies such as um, AUA, the uh, SUFU, the Society for Sexual Medicine, um, Pediatrics, um, and we've published between six to eight papers a year. As you will notice this year, there was a change. With COVID, obviously we are not doing as much international presenting. We're not doing any, and the conferences themselves are getting much smaller. And so we've taken a shift. We focused a little bit away from working on abstracts and getting out there um, and, and presenting this in person to working on creating peer-reviewed publications. As you can see here, this year alone, we have 21 peer-reviewed publications from our faculty. And again, I want you to think about that opportunity for you when you apply to programs and how you would benefit from this. Next. Um, there's some additional benefits. Um, I'm, not, I'm just going to put them up there. We talked about the freestanding uh, simulation, which is uh, accessible 24-7. We supply you with uh, AUA updates, SASP bundles. Any conference that you publish and get accepted a publication for an abstract, we send to you. We send you to that. We also will pay for courses. If you have an interest in robotics or reconstruction or prosthesis, we will help pay for that. We have done extremely well over the last four years getting philanthropic dollars. We have over a million dollars raised and the vast majority of that money goes to the residents for education and for research. In addition, you get a tech allowance, which includes phones, laptops, and et cetera. 
Finally, next, I just want to talk a little about work-life balance. Um, being in northern New Jersey where you are, you have an extremely diverse options for living. You can live in Hoboken. You can live in Franklin Lakes. You can really decide what sort of environment you want to live in with you and or your spouse or family or loved ones. You have a tremendous amount of opportunity to food. We love food here at Hackensack University Medical Center in our department. It's one of our favorite things is ordering out from different restaurants. All ethnic diversity in terms of food are available here in Bergen County. You have hiking, mountain biking, fishing, cycling, all within a 20-minute car ride. And of course, eight miles away, you have New York City. So you get all the benefits of living outside of New York, the less cost of living, opportunity to get out and breathe a little bit, get out and hike and fish, but yet within eight miles, either via public transportation or your car, you can be in New York City, and when Broadway opens, you can be there watching that Broadway show. Next. So in summary, I'm going to lift, list, I, I've gone over, but we have some incredible opportunities for you here at Hackensack University Medical Center. I share just a snippet of what's available here. And what I'd like to do now is really go around the horn and start showing you the different parts of the hospital. So what I'd like to start with is um, two extremely, extremely talented surgeons, Dr. Mudahar Ahmed and Dr. Ravi Munver. They do a tremendous amount of teaching here. Um, they have incredible surgical teaching philosophy. And I'd like to share like to, how you meet them as we bring you into one of our dedicated robotic ORs with Dr. Munver and Dr. Ahmed. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Seifelman. So welcome to the operating room. The operative experience here at Hackensack University Medical Center is really one of the prized jewels of the residency program. Our residents receive unmatched surgical training in all aspects of surgical urology. And that's not to say that it's just one area. We could do by diverse cases such as adrenalectomies, donor nephrectomies, robotic surgery, and an all skew of minimally invasive surgeries. As a testament to the program, our residents really relate that their experience is among the best in the area. And why is that? It's the passion of our faculty. Our faculty are dedicated to teaching our residents. And that's not to say teaching by watching, it's really teaching by letting the residents experience the glory and benefits of surgical experience through hands-on training. So with that, I'm gonna turn that over to Dr. Ahmed, who's gonna talk a little bit about the surgical experience that they receive at Hackensack University Medical Center. Thank you, Dr. Wanwer. Ravi mentioned almost everything that I was gonna mention, but this is a, in terms of, it's a robotic, state of art center, but not only robotic, as you mentioned, we do endourology, we do uh, female surgery, and then robotic is where we play the key role. And when it comes to robotic, Hackensack historically has been the forefront of robot. Uh, starting in uh, 2000, it was only the three hospital in the, in the entire country, I think, to acquire the robot. So just like that, we had ventured into SP, having a uh, the state of art center and having always the first to acquire, SP was acquired as one of the first hospitals in the United States. And since 2019, we have done almost uh, every single uh, robotic cases, various type using the SP machine. And including cystectomy, including female surgery, including simple as cyst decortication, partial nephrectomy. And when we say we do these cases, you'll also, when you come here, you'll be able to see how efficiently the cases are being done and how we also focus on cost. So you'll be able to learn efficiency and cost when we do these cases. It's not always about using the state of art, but using the state of art to reduce cost and reduce the time, operative time. And then as Dr. Munver mentioned, that our philosophy is actually you doing the case. And even on SP, we're probably one of the very few in the country that we're letting our residents sit in the SP robot and do the cases. So you're not just watching, you're gonna be sitting down to do the cases. And on my personal level, you know, my philosophy is almost every case that we do here, that you'll sit at least half the duration of the case. You know, so you'll progress, you'll start with one step, then you'll do the second step, then you'll go to the third step. 
And by the time your rotation is over, you'll pretty much do each part of every cases to a completeness. So this is an amazing center, amazing hands-on experience, and excellent state of art. And uh, when it comes to also cystectomy, we do basically all kind of diversion intercorporeally. So you'll get to see that as well. And uh, the other important thing is that we also have, as Dr. Stifelman mentioned, we have good academic and private cooperation. So you'll get to see both worlds and you'll want to seek advice that may come handy in your career at a future level. So I think I covered pretty much everything, but we could ask questions later and thank you. Great, so as you can see, the diversity of cases is really what we're about at Hackensack University Medical Center. We are enthralled by watching our residents grow over the years as a master skilled and become elegant surgical specialists. And nothing gives us more pride than watching our residents develop and go out into the community where they become the experts in their surgical area. So thank you very much for sharing this experience with us. And now we'll turn it over to Dr. Deborah Fromer, who is the Chief of Female Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, so I'm just going to talk a few minutes about our FPMRS program. Um, we have a very busy operative outpatient clinical and academic program um, that really fulfills just about every um, quality that you'd want to have in an FPMRS program in urology. Um, so our operative experience for the residents, it's very high volume when it comes to even basic FPMRS surgeries like prolapse surgery and incontinence surgery. And we also do a good amount of more complicated uh, FPMRS cases such as um, urethral diverticulectomy, fistula repair, and lower urinary tract reconstruction. Outpatient-wise, we have a state-of-the-art video urodynamic system, and uh, between Dr. Michelle Kim and myself, uh, we do the bulk of neurourology in the hospital as well. Um, this large outpatient experience that we have is fodder for the research that we do. Um, we work very closely with the medical school's uh, Center for Discovery and Innovation, where we are working with microbiologists on the genetics of resistant uh, organisms that cause urinary tract infections. Um, we have a multidisciplinary approach to our research, where we work with gynecology, infectious disease, transplant, as well as neurology on uh, many of our research uh, opportunities. So um, I think it's a really great thing for a urology program to have such a strong FPMRS component. Um, certainly having come from a, a, you know, decades ago, a program that was not quite as strong, I feel uh, very strongly that we train our residents in this particular field. And now, who am I introducing? We are introducing Dr. Deegan, who is in our simulation lab. Off to you, Dr. Deegan. Thanks, Deb. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Deegan. I'm the uh, director of the resident robotic training here at Hackensack University Medical Center. Let me again thank you for uh, taking some time out on your weekend to uh, see what we're about. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about the residency robotic teaching here. Uh, so first off, it's good to know we have uh, SimNow technology. This is the most up-to-date and advanced simulator technology available for the robot. Uh, it's got more, it's unlike your regular backpack, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with in the OR. Um, it's got uh, more simulated exercises, more, uh, it's got full length surgery. Uh, second, which I believe is the most important, is that I'm coming to you from our uh, lap and robotic training lab. I'm not in the operating room, okay? So again, this is not a backpack sitting on a console in the operating room. You have access to this and the lap stuff. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Very important in a program like ours where all of the robots are running 12 to 16 hours a day and you're waiting for them to finish in the OR before you could even touch it to start doing some simulation. Uh, third, uh, we sat down with all the robotic surgeons here and we came up with a curriculum which we think will make you extremely proficient on the robot. Uh, and I'm gonna get into that a little bit more in a minute. And finally, um, you're gonna, finish your residency here with a certificate from Intuitive. This is the certificate you're gonna to need to practice robotic surgery as an attending. So what are the objectives? 
One is we want you to understand the robot, all its components. We want you to be able to take the instruments in and out without any difficulty. We want you to understand patient positioning. We want you to understand patient port placement. And we want you to understand how to dock the robot. All of these very extremely important in having a successful outcome in the surgery. Uh, we also want you to know the advantages of using the robot. We want you to know which patients should have robotic surgery and which shouldn't. We don't want you to have any significant complications. You're gonna learn all of that stuff here. Uh, and finally, we want you to be comfortable uh, manipulating the robot instruments, the camera, the clutching to switch to different arms, using the electrocautery, and the suturing. Uh, so finally, what are the requirements? First off, you're going to complete the online robotic training with Intuitive. Once you've done that, it'll allow you access to the simulator. Um, which uh, will allow you to start the different uh, modules. We ask you to get about, not about, over 80% on the modules. Once you've finished all the modules we put together for you, we'll have you attend a dry lab. Usually with the intuitive rep uh, and myself, we sit down, we go over some of the pitfalls, how everything works, how to get yourself out of trouble if you do find yourself in trouble in surgery. And we do that usually quarterly. Um, finally, you start at the bedside. So with all of this training, I want you comfortable with this robot before you even step foot in the OR. Now you're in the OR, you're gonna do 10 assisted cases uh, at the bedside. After you've done 10 assisting cases, you're gonna do 20 cases uh, on the robot, more than 50% of the, um, the case. Um, after this is complete, you'll be proficient on the robot and we'll be able to get you to your certificate. So I think the take home points from resident robotic teaching here, one is we have the most advanced simulator available. Two is you have access to the simulator 24 seven, 365, well, you know, not uninterrupted. And finally, when you're done here, you're gonna be proficient on the robot. You're gonna get a certificate that allows you to practice robotic surgery as an attending uh, without needing any further uh, training, if that's the way you wanna uh, proceed. So that's it from uh, robotic training. Uh, thanks for spending some time with me. I'm gonna send you guys up now to meet our residents. Hey, welcome. Uh, this is the residence room. Um, I'm Nathan Chang, one of the residents on the PGY3. Uh, before I do a little bit of talking, I wanted to show you guys a little video we put together. Hey everyone, it's Sarah showing you guys the view from our workroom. Behind me, it's very sunny, but you can see the helipad right here. And here is the sky bridge that can lead us over from the main hospital to our ambulatory surgery center. This is Tenzin, our amazing nurse practitioner. Hello. She essentially can run the entire service herself. You know, she takes care of all our primary patients. Um, basically all the discharges. She communicates with all the attendings. She makes life extremely easy for us. And she teaches all of us. Hello. Going into the operating room. Hello, hello. Hi. Hello, How are you? All right. You want to introduce yourselves? This is Vivian. She's a robotic coordinator Hello. in the operating room. Hi, Hi. Hi. I'm Joan. Hi. Hi, Megan. Can you tell me um, your interaction with our residents, urology residents? Uh, when I come in in the morning, I usually try to touch base with one of the residents. They've already done their morning rounds, um, and I like to just make sure that there uh, was no issues with any of the patients overnight, and every, all the patients are stable. Uh, we review the discharges for the day, and then we also uh, will go over the admissions and the cases for the day. Also, in case there's any patients in the ER or other units in the hospital, I like to know the names of the patients to make sure that we get them up on the urology floor. Um, the nurses here help, are able to provide probably the best care for the patients. They all know how to irrigate and they can insert PD catheters and are really the eyes and the ears of the residents while they're in cases or, you know, off the unit. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Sarah, your favorite intern here. I wanted to show you all the cool spots around the hospital. This one's my favorite. It's a vending machine with real Mountain Dew. A 
I'm Nathan, the PGY3 here at Hackensack. In our third year, we have um, three afternoons, so three half days a week where we work here in the office instead of in the hospital um, running around. So it's kind of, it's a nice break, but it's also a good exposure for us to see patients in the office, uh, to do in-office uh, in procedures, and to work on research projects. Um, for example, right now I'm working on a research project with Dr. Steifman, and uh, we have all these resources where um, we've got these databases to work on, and essentially it's just all these patients in this database that we just you know, we just plug data from it and create these uh, these uh, projects. So uh, it's a good time. So, like I said before, I'm Nathan Chang with PGY3. This is Dr. Sarah Brink, our PGY1. That's Fahad Shekli, PGY2, Dr. Nizar Boudia, PGY4. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say I really feel for all the applicants here because, you know, this is an extremely important part of your academic careers, but unfortunately, because of the pandemic, you know, you aren't able to do sub-eyes, you're, you're not able to, you know, go around and interview at the institution. So, it's our job to really show you what we offer here at Hackensack, um, but it's also your job to do your due diligence and, and asking about the program to really get to know the program. So please, there, there's a question box here. Um, anytime you guys have a question, type it in, and we'll address that at the end of the presentation. Um, I, I wanted to bring up why I chose to rank this place so, so high. It's because it's a newer program, and like I said before, you know, we really have to do our due diligence as applicants to find out what works for us. And doing all these sub eyes, I was able to see certain good parts of different programs, certain parts that could be worked on. And I felt like coming to a new program uh, would really help me facilitate that and build a program that I think is, is perfect for the program as well as for my own educational benefits. So Dr. Seifman and Dr. Koo were very, uh, were very excited to have somebody who um, wants to do that for the program. And so if that's the challenge that you're willing to, to take, you know, that's, uh, this is the place for you. Um, I don't want to speak too much on the case volume here because that could be beaten to death, but I just wanted to bring up one example is at most programs, you know, there's a senior walking a junior through, through a procedure and unfortunately or fortunately, whatever, however you see it, it's not really possible here because at any one given time, there's five ORs going at once. So um, if there's a senior walking a junior through a, a case, a room is uncovered. So, you know, we, we really have to spread ourselves out there to uh, cover all these cases. Um, obviously, we have extremely supportive faculty and fa uh, ancillary staff, like the nurses, tens in our amazing APN. Um, they really take a great interest in us and in our education. Like Dr. Seifman said before, we have we a have pretty decent amount of funding for whatever we want to do. And for example, I uh, found a course on reconstruction at the Cleveland Clinic uh, last October, and it was completely paid for. My trip there was completely paid for. My hotel there was completely paid for. You know, car picked me up from my apartment to go to the airport. It was, you know, they really want us to go out there and uh, find out what we're interested in and bring all this knowledge back to the program. Um, so that's, you know, that's Hack and Sack, and obviously we're, we're all really good friends, and that's, every program says that, but it's true. Um, so I wanted to share the time with, with the rest of my co-residents to see what they wanted to say about the program. So. Wonderful. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah, the new intern uh, from Kansas City and just graduated from Medical College of Wisconsin. Um, my number one thing about the program is, you know, even when you're an intern, you will be in the OR in the first week. Um, that's really, really great experience to start off with. And um, even before I started, I was involved in three research projects. So that'll be really um, setting me up for a great start for potential fellowship applications. Hi everyone, my name is Fahad, I'm the PGY2. I'm from Los Angeles. I, I went to medical school at Beaumont in Michigan and I came here. Uh, as Nate said, then, like, uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a new program, but what I found is that it was a hidden gem when I came here for the interviews and it proved to me 
it's I, I can see that it's rocketing up there. And uh, what I love about it is the interest and the support that I get from the faculty, they who really cares and um, they really want us to be the best here. Hi, I'm Mizar, I'm the PGY4. And uh, we're very excited to have a new resident who can join our team. Um, it's a very exciting program and it, it's a great learning uh, experience here. We're, we're surrounded with great mentors and great surgeons. And uh, I like about the program how it's structured, where you have uh, different uh, rotations, whether it's female or pediatric urology. Um, it, it's, a, it's a great rotation. Every, every, each rotation is a great rotation to learn. I was so excited uh, to share them that I forgot to tell you about myself. I'm, I'm, I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I went to UCLA for college and USC for medical school. Um, I also want to bring up, even though this is a new program you know, in itself, they've been training rotators for 20 years, 20 plus years, um, from NJMS at Rutgers and uh, New York Medical College. Dr. Ahmed actually trained at NJMS, and they, can, they all say that you know, this is where they get their meat of their surgical experience, so this is uh, an awesome place. Um, yeah, I mean, if uh, you guys have any questions, I see some questions already, so that's good. But I'll turn it back to Dr. Seifman in the conference room. All right, so I, I think over the last 35 minutes or so, you got an opportunity to travel around the hospital a bit um, and to meet with uh, some of our key faculty here. You got to see, go into the OR, meet with Dr. Amin and Dr. Munver. You got to meet with Dr. Fromer, um, who runs our the FPMRS program. Um, you're gonna, some other folks in the room I'm gonna have you meet is uh, Dr. Shin is here. Dr. Ku is our program director is here as well. And what we like to do is really spend the next 15 or 30 minutes or so, whatever, how much long you guys wanna interact with us, answering questions for you and, and being very as forthcoming as we can to um, give you a sense of uh, you know, any of your concerns you may have or questions you have. The one thing I do want to make before we get to that is, as you saw, we, we spent a lot of time talking about robotics over the last half hour. Um, probably the reasons we spend so much time is because we have one of the largest robotics program in the country, and we have some of the greatest robotic surgeons, and that's where everybody uh, uh, in New Jersey comes to us um, to learn about robotics, also from the world. So we're very proud of that, but I want to be very clear. We do a tremendous amount of other surgery. We have a huge volume of stone cases here. We have a big volume of infertility as well as ED cases here. We do do open surgery. There are many cases that we do not do robotically or we do as hybrid techniques like cable thrombus up into the aorta, I mean up into the atrium. So you will get those experiences as well. So yes, we did focus on robotics. I think that's a differentiator of ours. I think the fact that you actually sit and you do the surgery here is a huge differentiator of ours. But I want to be clear, you will get the breadth of all the other areas um, in urology, and it's not, it's not the only thing you're going to do here. And I know that's a question that was recently asked. Um, I'm going to, being that we're in the faculty room, uh, there's a couple of questions I see here. Uh, what is the role of the fellows? Um, and how do they, is it a distractor from the rest of the program? So I'm going to ask Dr. Munver to take that question. Dr. Munver has run one of the most successful endurology fellowship programs uh, in the country for the last, uh, I think, 15 years um, and gets people from all over the country to come. So why don't you answer that for us? Sure. So, you know, I have, I, I, I have two hats. One is to really focus on the residents over the five years that they're here and also focus on my fellow for the one year that the fellow is here. But the integral part of the fellow and the residents working together has been really a harmonious experience for the last 17 years of running a fellowship program. The fellow does some of the more complex parts of the operation, while the residents do the most basic and initial parts of every robotic surgery that we do. When the residents master certain skills, they get to do more of the complex portions of the operation. So in, in essence, while the fellow is getting more comfortable with the complex parts of the operation in the beginning, the residents are getting comfortable with the more basic parts. And once the fellow has mastered those operations, the residents get to do those more complex surgeries. And that's to say that I usually work with the more junior resident 
So the jet residents that are working in the beginning part of their experience, and that's mostly for the robotic surgeries. When they become senior residents, they work with Dr. Ahmed, Dr. Stifelman, and they get to do a lot more of the complex portions of the operations once they've mastered the basic part. In terms of endourology, the residents do almost the entire operation. In fact, they do the entire operation guided by the fellow and with me as a backup. So it's really a hands-on experience. And if you talk to any of the residents here, they will tell you the same exact story, that they get the majority of their training through hands-on experience in a graduated fashion. And it's really a nice, um, I, I think, again, harmonious relationship. What are some changes that you anticipate at Hackensack over the next three to five years, Dr. Koo? And there are there any plans to increase beyond one resident a year? So changes over the next three to five years and plan to increase to run one resident. So um, for both questions, the changes, the nice part about it is that we, we have a very dedicated faculty and we uh, meet with the residents regularly. So biannually, we're constantly revising and reviewing how to make improvements. So the changes are that uh, we are trying to modify the education. So for example, we're getting them more involved in research early on. So this year we're doing that uh, so that we have research conferences quarterly. Uh, they're getting to be uh, participating in research projects. So these are some of the things we're doing. We're also getting people for more outpatient experience early and we're giving people more time for uh, inpatient opportunities as well. Um, in terms of the greater changes, we, we have developed a program now that we feel that we're uh, well established enough to increase to a full complement. This is something that we've uh, submitted to the residency review committee and we're hopeful uh, whether this year or next year that we should be increasing to complement of uh, two residents per year. Um, what that allows us is to continue to develop a um, sort of a big program, but also allow us to develop more one-on-one -on -one teaching. So some of the examples are along with a big service, we specifically have rotations where they're doing more one-on-one -on -one mentoring with female urology, male sexual health pediatrics. So we want to think of it more as a, like a mini fellowship for those rotations. And, and again, the main emphasis is it's a very interactive process where the faculty and residents are really working toward the same goal of how do we optimize the education throughout the whole process. Yes, how are you doing? My name is David Chin. Uh, my area of expertise here is uh, male infertility and sexual dysfunction. And that's what I bring to the program uh, here. I make sure that our residents learn that component, uh, which includes uh, all aspects of male fertility, sexual dysfunction, also microsurgery. Dave, do you have, do you have any roles uh, with any of the societies right now or any connections in, in terms of male infertility or erectile dysfunction? Well, currently I'm the president for the uh, SSMR, which is the Society for the Study for Male Reproduction. That's the AUA's uh, Male Infertility Special, Specialty Society. So that's a position that I was elected by my peers here. And what really helps with that is that we also, right now I'm involved with uh, trying to get the programming, what we're gonna do for that uh, for 2021 for the AUA. And it also allows that if you're interested in andrology or in sexual dysfunction, you know, there's uh, many of my colleagues are also the fellowship directors and therefore we will be able to plug you into those fellowships if you are interested in doing that. So I'm, another question came up, Dave, which is um, if you could talk about the type of fellowship programs that residents who have left here have gone into. Now remember, um, we don't have, um, we haven't graduated our own resident yet, we only have our fourth resident. But we have graduated 21 years of residents through NJMS, through New York, um, from the New York Westchester campus. And tell us a little about your relationship of working with those residents and where they've gone and how you have helped or not helped them. All right, so this is a program where we're obviously very familiar with um, teaching residents and also more importantly, to make sure those residents are set up for success 
for whatever they want to do, particularly with fellowships. And so, um, you know, with those, with, with, the form, with the Rutgers residents, like in two in particular, uh, have gone on to Andrology Fellowships. One is going to be going next, the following year, and someone else has also finished one recently. Uh, we've also been very supportive in getting into the robotics uh, fellowships if they need it, and their urology, female, uh, you know, pelvic floor reconstruction. And so, you know, this is an environment I think that we, I think we are all very connected with a lot of the, the people who are, you know, I guess, the movers and shakers of the AUA. And I think that's what is one of the big advantages of being here is because we are not young, but we're not old, but we are in positions of leadership so that we can make sure that you are set up for success. Do residents rotate at any other sites besides Hackensack? Is there a VA? Um, what, what else, where else do they get their experience, Harry? From um, in the PGY3 and PGY4 years, the residents will rotate um, three-month rotation at Mountainside Medical Center, which is a smaller, more community-based. And w they work with a very well-established um, group of urologists. There are about four of them who are, have hi history of um, you know, dedicated teaching experience. And this is more of an opportunity to get some more in-depth look at how community urology is practice more of a closer to more of a one-on-one -on -one setting with a smaller group so they spend outpatient experience inpatient experience and the idea is we send them the first year as a PGY3 so they'll get a good experience for three months now with everybody being familiar when they go back the second time as a PGY4 we want them to almost work like junior partners. So they're working at a higher level, and this just gives a different perspective on, on the, uh, the urology training that they wouldn't get from a sort of a university medical center. So uh, before we uh, move on to a couple other questions, I'd like to have Deb Fromer talk a little bit about, you know, the teaching outside of necessarily the hospital environment. I know that Deb and Dave have created uh, sort of mini fellowship programs for the residents to come and spend time with them. And tell us a little about how that's working, Deb, and what, what the resident can expect when they work with you. Sure, so um, I just started this with Nazar, our PGY4. Um, and, you know, one of the main goals is to um, give our residents a really good urodynamic experience in the outpatient setting. So, uh, you know, typically on a Wednesday, I will be doing five or six urodynamics, boom, 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 one after another. Oh, that's my camera. Hi, guys. Um, and so um, the goal is for the residents to know how to do urodynamics from start to finish and also to know how to interpret them because for a lot of residents, even, you know, for the first couple of years, urodynamics is like this big black box. Um, so we hope to give them those skills. And then the other thing is the outpatient um, female urology, neurourology perspective, um, which, you know, you, you also don't get a lot of hands-on training on, you know, for the big first couple of uh, years of your inpatient urology experience. Um, so that is also something that um, we aim to teach our residents during this time. And uh, will they interact with your patients or are they just sort of sitting by the side? No, they are, they are interacting with the patients. And the, I mean, the goal is to get them to ultimately do the procedures by the, by, you know, towards the halfway through their little mini fellowship that they spend with me. So, you know, there's a question about Polap. Um, and are we doing any whole lap here for BPH? This is from Christopher Warren. I'm going to ask Dr. Uh, Mudahar Ahmed to answer that. Okay. Yeah, so that's an excellent question. You know, whole lap is just one of the technology in terms of laser. You know, you have other green light laser. Dr. Ravi Manbar does uh, significant size green light laser. And uh, he does them pretty successfully. A lot of our private, a lot of our private attending does whole bunch of green light laser in here, uh, wide varieties of uh, uh, sizes of prostate. So you'll get enough of those endoscopic management of uh, prost BPH, as well as TURP. We have uh, sort of some of our senior attending, like Dr. Vinny Lanteri, who I learned that TURP from. He does excellent TURP. So you'll get wide varieties, specifically whole up, 
some of us do hold up but we don't do quite a bit of hold up but we do more green light laser than hold up but it's a similar idea then when it comes to other form of treatment like robotic dr stifle man he does through the bladder with the multi-port which very few people does it and he describes it very well and reproducible and now we're also starting to do with this single port through the bladder infra umbilical and just insufflate the bladder and do the entire case with a single port robot and remove the uh, adenoma that way and uh, so you'll get to see wide range of bph treatment from qrp through robotic uh, simple prostate so i think you'll get enough experience in wide varieties that you could pick that up and use it in your practice that's great thank you so much um, we're going to move over to the residents now and there are a few questions that I'm going to ask the residents to address because I think they will be able to answer this better than anybody. Um, one of the questions is about patient population. So when we go back in the resident room, we can talk about the different types of patient populations you see here. Um, is it diverse or is it very uniform? Another question was um, regarding the call schedule. And let me see what other questions. The call we want you guys to answer. Uh, patient population, and um, we talked about the fellows already. Um, do residents carry their own patients during clinic hours? Um, we'll get back to that when we come back here. So let's have the residents sort of talk about their call experience, what the patient population is, and whatever else you guys want to add. So we're going to bring it back over to the resident room. All right. Hi again. So I'm going to be talking about the call schedule for us. Um, we, so we are currently uh, about uh, six residents, so we're taking about a Q5 call. Uh, our call usually, the, the intern usually is in-house call, which means uh, they, they're in the hospital for uh, 24 hours. Uh, it usually happens about two times a month for the interns. Uh, and uh, for PGY2 and above, it's usually a, a home call where you can, where you finish work, go home, and then you can answer the pager from home, and then uh, you come in for emergencies and stuff like that, or you, if you need it to come right now. So um, the cause, as I said, is Q5 with every five days, but uh, we, since we have like some of the residents rotate at outside hospitals, so when they go to the other hospital, so we, we become like a five residents, so we get a Q4 call. So I would say it's about, a, Q four and a half uh, on average. Um, it's it's uh, it's really like a, uh, we usually have like great support before like we, we sign out and then we get the, we, we when we get the pager we hold a uh, call and um, we manage it from there. Regarding the population, I'll have Nate talk about this. So in terms of the the patient population, um, it's a pretty good mix. Uh, Bergen County itself is. You know, it's an affluent area, so we do have middle class and above patients who are getting a lot of the care here. But there are other areas around Hackensack um, that are a little bit lower income, and so we have patients uh, who are underrepresented, um, uh, minority patients who uh, may not be getting the care they get uh, regularly, who come in with advanced pathologies, and we take care of them. You know, um, even if they don't have insurance to come to the emergency room, we get that kind of exposure to, to a different mix of patients. So it's it's a pretty good experience in terms of you know, seeing everybody. Um, we're often using the translator to talk to patients uh, because of this diversity of patients. So. And I'll just talk about how many patients we have on the list. So in general, our list is 20 to 30 patients. Um, about 10 of those are our primaries. Um, what's really nice here is most of our patients are going home uh, post-op day one. So we have high turnover for our primaries um, and then our consults are you know, 10 to 20 each. Yeah, definitely. We have like, uh, I think we have a great dynamic. We were friends more uh, before we were co-workers. Mm -hmm. So uh, we really like have a great dynamic communication. And uh, we kind of like in the, from the beginning, we, we, we were understanding each other and we were able to communicate with, with, with each other very well. And I think this is key in a, in a good uh, program. Um, we go out when, whenever we have chance. Uh, we always, we, we also, uh, we get like the faculty sponsored uh, <laughs> house goings. Yeah, we go to like uh, their houses sometimes after Mr. Hillian and uh, like, yeah, 
lately, like last week. So we do we do have a lot of activities outside of hospital. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Barbara's absolutely great with everything. Yeah. Um, about four times a year, she sets up for us to have a nice fancy dinner together. Oh, yeah. So we're going out um, over yeah. Labor Day weekend um, to a nice place uh, in Jersey. Yeah. All right. Back to you guys. All right. Well, listen, we're coming up to the hour mark in which we said we'd like to end within an hour of this and give you the opportunity to enjoy the rest of your day. The one last thing I want to do is just kind of go around the horn here with the faculty and let each of the, our faculty members um, in a very loud voice so we'll make sure we capture it on, on our uh, microphone just uh, end with any you know one or two sentences or thoughts you want to leave the, the potential residents with. So we'll start with uh, Dr. Deegan. You guys, again, thank you for spending uh, an hour with us. Um, I think you've uh, seen what we offer here. Again, uh, I'm big on endo-urology, robotics, and training you guys. Uh, if you have any other questions, I think Barbara's information is there. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you some more. You can shoot us an email. Super. Dr. Mudahar Ahmed. Yeah, thank you for spending that Sunday uh, afternoon. And, uh, you know, we talked about great training and this and that. One thing I want to let you know that I did my residency, you know, part of the New Jersey Medical School here at Hackensack. And one thing that was really important to me is the work environment. Here in uh, Hackensack, each rooms are private for the patient. Patients are happy because of the nice environment. A lot of time you walk into the room, even in the difficult situation, they're nicer to you. So when you have a nice environment, it's easier for the residents to work day in, day out. I think that's a very important point when you go and interview in other places to keep that in your mind. How are the patient's environment? How is your work environment? And this is a key. Super. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Fromer? That's an excellent point, and I just want to add on that because I trained in an inner city hospital, and I was amazed when I came here that the nurses were so nice and were like, oh, here's your patient, Dr. Fromer. Let me bring you over to meet your patient. And it was just a, a very eye-opening experience. One other thing that has not been talked about, and I want to highlight a major asset to our program, is Barbara. Can you pan over to Barbara? Barbara runs the program. Um, she, she has been very key for applicants, for current residents, and I think that she makes everyone's life, including our own, a lot better with all of her effort. So kudos to Barbara, and thank you for organizing this. Oh, thank you very much. You know, I would, I would just would add, you know, they say, you know, to every great program is a great residue coordinator. And I would say we have the, I've worked, again, in many hospitals. There is no one who's going to take care of you, who's going to make sure you do things on time, who's going to uh, just treat you like, a, like one of their own brother or sisters as Barbara. And we're fortunate to have her. And as you interact with her more and more through this process, you will see that as well. So thank you. We're going to keep moving around the room. I'm going to start with Dr. Munver now uh, at the head of the table there. Um, and uh, Ravi, have a couple of final words you want to say? Great, thank you. So, you know, applicants always ask us, you know, what is this like? It's a new residency program. It's really not a new residency program. We've been training residents for over 20 years. It's a residency program with a new name. And the reason why we are doing this is because we are so passionate about the education that we wanted to cater the program make it one of the best in the area, the best in the country. And I think that those residents that come here and train with us and see the program will agree that we have a world-class faculty. We are passionate, we're dedicated. So we look forward to the opportunity to work with you. Dr. Shin. One of the things I just want to make sure to touch upon, I think there's a question about teaching philosophy. And, and really what I think myself as well as everyone in the room is that we are committed to make you the best person, the best surgeon, the best urologist when you leave this training program. And we do that because when we, when you're operating, when you're actually operating on the console or when they're with us in clinic doing our procedures, there's feedback. There's feedback in not only finding out how you're doing, but also how you can improve and what we can take you to further to the next step. And so that's what I really like about this program here. Um, I think our residents will say that, is that we are committed to make you the best. And that's, I think, what makes us, distinguishes us from everybody else. Uh, Dr. Ku. Um, same thing, a lot, lot of echoing the, the sentiment here is, is really, um, we want you to get a sense that we are very dedicated, passionate about what we do. And we're, when we select and recruit you all, we're really looking for somebody who can come in 
and become part of our program so that we not only are involved in educating you, but we want you to stimulate us and push us to our best at the same time. And we're really continuing to build this team and we're really excited about the growth. So I'm going to finish it up, um, which brings me to another sort of story. I remember when I was at Columbia training in the 90s. I won't mention names, but one of the Red Sea coordinators came in and said, this place is about esprit de corps. It's about you versus us. <laughs> I will tell you, we have the exact opposite philosophy. This is about working together. And it, I'm going to go back to this uh, trademark of ours, which is the, uh, the orchestra and the way we started this, this day. And it is an orchestra. We're, you know, your training involves a tremendous amount of effort from many people. It's not just the doctors that you work with and the surgeons. It, it's, it's the secretaries that you interact with. It's our residue coordinators that you interact with. It's the nurses on the floor. It's the nurses in the OR. It's your PA. It's the NPs. It's an orchestra. It's, it's a group of people working in concert together to give you the tools that you need to be an amazing physician. And that's what this is all about. And that I think I want to end with that. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for joining us. Um, please let your fellow residents or future residents know that we're going to uh, host this up on our website sometime this week. Uh, we'll put, we are going to tweet that out. Uh, we'll also send that to you. We do want to get as much um, you know, traction as we can regarding this. It is a tough time, as Dr. Chang said, uh, with the COVID. Um, and I, but, I, but I do want to, again, thank you for taking your time to spend it with us. And I wish you all a great day. And from Hackensack University Medical Center, wish you all the best. Thank you.